Hi, it's me, Waffles. In this video, I'll be showing you how to create and use a template pool, which is basically the base file that Minecraft Java Edition uses to determine what structures to place in your world. Using this, you can create basically any custom structure you want and load it in however you want. However, you will also need to use two other files, which are the configured structure feature and the structure set file. This video only goes over template pool, but I have videos on those other two files and they will be linked in the description. So I have here this little structure that I have built for demonstration purposes in this video. Let's say that I want to make this structure generate in my game. So what I'm going to do is slash give waffles are better structure block. If you don't know how to use a structure block, it is quite easy. Basically, you're going to need to find the most negative coordinate. So if I open my F3 screen, I'll have to be looking in the most west direction and the most north direction. So basically, I need to be in the northwest corner because negative Z is this direction and negative X is that direction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my structure block down um, right beneath the northwest corner of the structure that I want to save. I'm then going to switch to save mode, uh, and I'm going to set the structure size to the size of the structure, and the max is 48 by 48 by 48. So I believe for me it is 11 by 11 by 11. Let me check that. Uh, 11 by 10 by 11, actually. This corresponds to X, Y, Z. So yes, this is now uh, exactly the right height. Spawn a witch in here. This witch is always going to spawn with the structure. Okay, I'm gonna go down here and I'm going to uh, make sure that I have include entities on because I want the witch to spawn in the structure. Dang it, the witch just walked out. Then I'm going to change the structure name. This can be whatever you want. I will call it enchanting underscore room. Okay, now that I have fixed the witch problem, I can quickly go over here and click save. So if I place another structure block here, name it enchanting underscore room, because that's what I saved the last one as, and include entities on, I can then load that, uh, and then click load again, and it will spawn the structure with the witch. So what I can now do is open that world that I was just in, uh, and then open the world folder, and this way I can actually get that structure file that I just saved and put it into my data packs. So I can go into the generated folder, and then Minecraft, and then structures, and then get that structure nbt file right here. And so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go into my data pack. I've already set up this data pack with a pack.mc meta file. If you don't know how to use that, then check the icard up here. So then inside of the data folder right here, I'm going to create a new folder called WAB world gen, which is my namespace. And of course this has to follow the naming rules of only including either lowercase letters, uh, numbers, underscores, hyphens, or periods. And then in there, I'm going to create a new folder called structures. And let's see, I'm going to create a new folder called enchanting room, and then drag in my enchantingroom.mbt file. So it isn't necessary to have this parent folder. I just like to have it there because in the future, if you have more structures and more complex structures, it's always better to just have a overarching folder that can include more stuff just for organizational purposes. Now that I have this structure, I need to make a template pool so that the game uh, can recognize when to generate the structure. So inside of my namespace, I'm going to create a new folder called world gen. Uh, and inside of WorldGen, a new folder called template underscore pool. And so inside of template pool, I'm again going to create a new file. This is going to be called enchanting room, and then it has to be a .json file. So of course, the first thing that I have to do is create a curly bracket. In quotation marks, put name. This is just going to be the location of the file. So it's going to be your namespace, so WAB world gen. And then if it's inside of a folder within template pool, it's going to be the name of that folder. But since mine is not, you're just going to go straight to the name of the file, which is enchanting underscore room. 
So after this is the fallback. You're going to type fallback. This is going to be the structure that the game generates if for some reason it isn't able to load the structure. So that's usually because there is something else in the way, like for example, if you're trying to load a house in a village inside of another house, that won't work and it will load the fallback structure instead. So in most cases, this is going to be Minecraft empty, which just means that it won't load any structures at all if it isn't able to load the one that you want it to load. And then after that, you're going to want to put elements. And this is going to be the list of things that it can generate in this template pool. This needs to be a square bracket instead of a curly bracket. But anyways, inside of that, you're going to put a curly bracket. So in quotation marks, you're going to put wait, oops, <laughs> wait. And this is just going to determine how likely it is to choose this out of the following list. So for example, if this one was wait one and I added a second one, and made this one wait 10. 10 out of 11 times it would choose this section, and 1 out of 11 times it would choose this section. So that's how you can add some randomization to structures. But I'm just going to be focusing on one of these for now. What's actually important is what comes next, which is the element section. This is just what determines what the game actually creates. So the first thing that you're going to need to put is element underscore type. This can be one of several things, but the first one I'm going to talk about is single underscore pool underscore element. If you have a single pool element, you're going to need to put location and processors and projection. Location is going to be the file location of the structure you want to load. So that's going to be your namespace, WAB world gen for me just like before, the main folder that it's in, and this time I do have a main folder, unlike up here. That's going to be enchanting underscore room, since that's the name of the folder inside of structures that it's in. And then I'm going to need slash and then enchanting underscore room again. So that way the game just knows what to load. Processors, I'm going to leave as Minecraft empty for now. And that is just gonna mean that there isn't anything that is modifying the blocks that are loading. So processors do things like replace stone bricks with mossy stone bricks randomly just to make it look older or whatever. And I have a video about this if you want to learn more about that. All right, I've just reloaded VS Code because it wasn't doing all the syntax stuff, but that has been fixed now. If you are using Visual Studio Code with the Datapack Helper Plus extension, you will see that this is underlined, which means that the data pack has detected that that structure does indeed exist. So if, for example, I had forgotten to put a underscore, this would have a dot 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 under it, which means that uh, it can't find it. But since I did get the name correct, it is underlined and I can control click to go to that file. But anyways, the last thing that you're going to need to know is the projection. And this can be either rigid, oops, rigid like that, or terrain underscore matching. And rigid will just generate your structure in like a solid building, which is probably what you want, but terrain matching will like form it along the terrain. And that is used for stuff like village paths so that they aren't just straight solid paths. Their shape will be molded to a hill or something. So that is likely not what you want in most cases, but again, it is what you would want in some cases like what I just mentioned. So all of this is for the single pool element which is what you are most likely to want to use. In the single pool element, your structure will be loaded in exactly how it is, except that any parts of your structure that are structure voids will not override the blocks that are originally there. You can slash give yourself a structure void when you are saving the structure and replace any air that you don't want to generate as air with a structure void. That's useful for things like generating stuff underwater where you want any air in the structure you save to be replaced by the water that is around it or something. So single pool element basically gives you the most control over your structure. However, if you don't want to mess with structure voids, you can change it to legacy underscore single pool element, and that will just treat any air in your structure like a structure void. However, that's probably not great for underground structures because anything you want to be air will be filled with the stone that was originally in its location before the structure generated. However, those are not the only two pool element types you can also change it to feature pool element but if you're using feature pool element instead of location you're going to need to put 
feature. This is going to be the exact same thing, but for a Minecraft feature. And so for the feature, you're just going to put any one of the placed features in Minecraft or any custom placed features, except I have not gotten to those yet. So for a list of all the default features and stuff, you can check the iCrowd up here for how to get sliced limes and L world gen default files, or just check the link in the description and go to placed feature. So say I just want to make it an acacia tree. Minecraft acacia. And this will generate an acacia tree as my structures. And then you can also just set this to empty underscore pool element, and then you don't need either of these. And it will just be a completely empty structure, there won't be anything there. So what I'm going to do is go back to the single pool element, and that is, I guess, the end. That's all you need for your structure pool. That's it for this video. If you have any questions about anything that I covered in this video, or if you have any suggestions for future videos, then let me know in the comments, or you can join my Discord server that is linked in the description, and talk to me about stuff there. I'd like to thank my patrons, Tonta Turner and Sayori1. They are supporting me and the Waffles SMP, so of course I really appreciate what they are doing. I hope you have a good day, and thanks for watching.